off we go on a Tuesday here inside the vault, the little Ravens lunch hour live stream on deck here for you on the 16th of April. We're nine days out, partner, from the 2024 NFL Draft, which, of course, allows us to remind you that if you haven't gotten your tickets yet, please do. Our inaugural marathon draft party live stream is coming right up. It's going to be held at Soundstage in downtown Baltimore to celebrate opening night of that draft. From a Ravens perspective, Thursday, April 25th, 7 o'clock, 40 bucks gets you in the door. That includes a premium tailgate buffet dinner option provided by Clean Cuisine. This will, of course, be streamed across all of our platforms if you can't make it in person, but we would be thrilled to have you out there. Ticketmaster is how you can get your tickets secured today. There's a uh, link that we have included in the show notes below, and it would mean the world. Sarah's flying in from Columbus for this event, as you probably know by now. <laughs> so we'd love to see you guys out there in person. Yeah, and I just uh, want to apologize for being late today. I, I we always make jokes, Bobby, that if ever we're like a minute or two late, the comment section starts like like going after you. <laughs> so uh, today it was definitely my fault. I had some big time technical issues. My whole operation kind of just fell apart. So we're on duct tape here, kind of operation. And I was like, do you think they're going to be making fun of you again? Even though it's my fault that we're late. So. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but we made it. We made it. We're, we're here and we're excited to talk football as we are on draft night. And off we go. These shoulders can sustain those yeah, blows, by I know. the way. You're All never right? worried about it. Yeah, I'm ready to roll. I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to. That's what partners are for. So, uh, lots to get to today. We'll begin discussing something that Sarah and I kind of noticed about yesterday's off season program ramping up for the Ravens, which is voluntary. And that was not only Rashad Bateman, but some other notable veterans choosing to pass, at least on the initial part of these. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about what the optics of that is and uh, where Rashad is right now based on, on his social media that we shared with you yesterday on yesterday's show. We'll also talk about the opportunity that's at stake for some of the younger players, given what is now up and rolling right now when it comes to those offseason program regiments. Emmanuel Acho, talking head, talked a little bit about Lamar Jackson and the 2024 Ravens, and we'll get into some more. But first, Sarah, where is wide receiver Rashad Bateman ahead of his biggest year to date as a pro, given what's at stake? I mean, really, you're not expecting the Ravens to pick up his fifth-year option, meaning, you know, going into his fourth year, this will be a contract year for him. And uh, he's got a lot to prove, obviously. We know that his potential is through the roof. We know what he's capable of. We've seen flashes of it. Uh, but unfortunately for both he and Lamar as a duo, we've yet to see what we all feel like uh, can be a really high ceiling between the two of them as playmakers. Yeah, so so just to be clear, so we're, so we're kind of out there. What we think Bateman's not there. That hasn't been confirmed. We're not there. We're basing this off of um, the photos and videos that the team posts on their website and on their social media accounts. Um, we've been through them all. There is no Rashad Bateman signing. I guess he could could be there and just not photographed. Um, seems unlikely, but could be there. Other people I did not see photographed. Um, Nelson Aguilar, Mark Andrews, Marlon Humphrey, who I'm pretty sure is in Japan right now. Uh, Brennan Stevens, Roquan Smith, Ronnie Stanley, uh, Brett Urban, Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton. So those are guys I did not see photographed. So I just want to be fair. And I also, I, I, Bobby, I think this has never been made official, but my feeling is, is that the Ravens try to make sure one or two of their established veterans or leaders are there. So like this week, it seems to be Lamar and Derrick Henry and some of those offensive stars like, like Linderbaum and whatnot. And Zay, Zay Flowers is there, although Zay's not established, so I wouldn't put him in that yet. But I'm sure Lamar will not be at some other ones. And then maybe Roquan Smith will kind of rotate in, right? And then Marlon Humphrey might rotate in and Marcus Williams and and some of these more established veterans, Mark, Mark Andrews will probably filter in. And I think that's kind of the way the, the Ravens kind of like it is they make sure they get some veterans there for different weeks throughout the off season. And, it, and I think it was a great move to have Lamar kick that off. I think that's just optics wise, a great, oh, yeah. a great look for sure. Now, now to be consistent on where I've been, cause I don't want to be one of those people that celebrate it when they show up 
and then act like it's not a big deal if they don't show up. So to me, I've had to be consistent over the years. If you're an established veteran and not new to the team, and there's not a brand new coordinator, I feel like it's okay that you're not there, right? Like it's, I don't like, especially for this portion where it's just conditioning and strength and meetings and there's no football, you're not allowed to do football out there yet. That's the, the rules coming from the, the agreement between the NFL and the NFLPA. So now of those names I just named, however, of guys that are not there in this like established group, but I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think Bateman belongs in that established group. I feel like Bateman is more in the Odafe Owe kind of category that says, you know what? You're going into a big year. It could be a contract year. Both guys could be exercised the fifth year options. So to me, while I still don't, uh, you know, I don't want to like say it's all over for Bateman or, or make it extreme or anything, but to me, Bateman's a guy I would like to see there. Now, for the audio only people, you just played some of the workout video that he's posted on his socials. I was just looking at his social. He's in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, that's the, the mountains and all that kind of stuff. So he is out there and he is working. So that no, there's no implication here that he's not working or anything like that. But to me, it's it's a better it's better to be with the team. It's better that in a year that we're you know it just doesn't seem like he and Lamar have been on the same page yet. If Lamar's in Baltimore and Lamar's in the, at the Ravens training facility, I would like to see Bateman there. Now, again, I'm not going to bury him. Uh, and he could have personal things going on. Maybe, maybe there's something going on in Arizona that he needs to be there for something personal. If there's nothing personal going on, that's keeping him from being in Baltimore. I feel like he's in a situation that would be better that he would, would be in Baltimore along with Odafe and some of these other guys we're going to talk about that are there because he's got a big opportunity ahead and his number and his quarterback is there too. So I think if there's nothing personal going on, I feel like he should be there. Yeah. I don't think there's anything to argue about with that whatsoever. I don't think, I think we both kind of agree. It's, it's not the end of the world by any stretch of the imagination, right. but from an optic standpoint and from even just solely looking at it, in terms of Rashad from a personal side, given where he is contractually, given where he is in his specific career, coming yeah. off his first full healthy season as a pro, and knowing how important this upcoming season will be for him personally as a pro, yeah, then, yeah. then wouldn't you want every single kind of opportunity to prove yourself leading into the biggest year yet? Absolutely. And that's why, that's why for like Lamar, I would say this was like a good optics move, right? It, because I don't know that he needs to be there to like be in the playoffs later on, but I, but I don't think it hurts with Bateman. I think it's more than optics. I think it's, it's your situation in that you are going, it sounds like you're the favorite to be the starter across from Zay and your first three years just isn't up to what he even wanted. Uh, then it seems like a good move to do so, but there's plenty of time. And maybe he'll show up next week and, you know, and that'll be fine. He's obviously working, but yeah, I would like to see Bateman there for the majority of the off season. Think about it too, what you just said. You've been given essentially a starting role is, is what we've been told through various press conferences and, right. and, and questions that, that have been answered about you. And yet your fifth year option is probably not going to get picked up. You That's have an opinion. We'll see. Right. Yeah. Right. We'd be, I'd, I'd be surprised if that were the case. Um, in uh, May 2nd is the deadline, just a couple weeks from right now. He and Adafi Owe, Eric Tacosta, has to make decisions on, on, on both of those figures. Bateman's is just over $14 million, if I'm not mistaken. So you think about the opportunity that you have right now, like even if – so if that doesn't get picked up, you want to go into this year with your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. and, and you have health on your side now, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in agreement that any chance you get, any type of opportunity, any rep, whether it's football related or not, if it's related to the team, if it's related to Lamar, who you have to have more cohesion with, then you're going to want to take that opportunity, aren't you? That's what I think. So. But but I do want to transition into some of the guys that they also have big opportunities, not just Bateman, that are there. 
Yeah. Um, so, you know, we can head into that and look at all the guys that are there. We obviously know that Lamar and look how happy this guy is. Look at his, <laughs> what his drills, just a big grin on his face here in April, Lamar Jackson looking super happy there at the Under Armour Performance Center. We know that Derrick Henry was there. We kind of, we covered this yesterday, these two leaders on offense, and we both know the NFL messed up letting these two guys come together. But these younger guys, okay, the ones that are not established, and I want to start on the defensive side of the ball. Some of these photos I'm going to be, we're going to be bringing in, talking about the opportunities ahead of these younger guys. Um, we're going to start on the defensive side, and we just talked about how Rashad and Odafe Owe are in the same situation, right? They were both drafted the same year, both at the end of the first round, both wanting to get maybe their fifth years picked up or an extension. Big years for both of them. And then there he is, Odafe Owe and David Ajabo uh, there at the Under Armour Performance Center. We got more pictures here. Look at those, look at those guns, David Ajabo right there. So, so uh, these guys, and by the way, I think David Ajabo is like a staple there, even when they don't have the official offseason program. I hear he's there basically all the time. I know his family's, I believe, in Scotland. So you'd think he'd, he'd, uh, you know, go home for, for an extended period of time, but no, he's, he's a staple there. And Odafe and Bobby, uh, these are two guys that if they weren't there, it'd be like, just like Bateman. Why aren't you there? These are huge years for you. Right? So Ojabo going into the third year, first yep. year, we knew it was going to be a red shirt year, second year injured again. I mean, these guys, if they can put it all together, this is your future at outside linebacker. Absolutely. And I, Daniel Reese's tweet here was interesting in the sense that you know, we're 24 hours removed from from what Devontae Smith getting paid by Philadelphia at the wide receiver position. And uh, Daniel was just doing a little exercise on, on X. And given that situation, uh, he writes, what would Ravens fans think of uh, the team taking Adafi Owe's fifth year at $13.3 million. So that's the option. The deadline for that, like we mentioned a minute ago, is May 2nd. Mm -hmm. So you take that option. You pick it up at $13.3 million for 2025. And adding then three years for $17 million per year afterwards. There's definitely some risk that's attached to that. Because you're betting on the development. But getting a contract done early with OA could help secure him long term for cheaper than waiting. And I think that's why I was reacting to yesterday's move mm. from a Philadelphia's front office perspective, because they got out in front of Devante's deal and he's a star for them. He's somebody that's developed underneath their tutelage. And so while you're betting, you would be in this situation that Daniel's proposing, you'd be betting on, on a moving forward. You'd be betting on Chuck Smith, the outside linebackers coach and, and everything that goes into the the adding technique and becoming more than just a speed rusher. And so it's an interesting thought maybe that Eric DaCosta has already glossed over, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I definitely like this idea. I mean, um, this is, as you said, betting on him, right? That you're not waiting to see what he does in the fourth year before you're like, oh, crap. Kind of like, kind of what we just saw with um, – uh, Matabike, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Ravens year after year after year, they were expecting Matabike to, to, to burst out. And then there are reports that the Ravens did try to, uh, you know, before th his big year last year where he had double digit sacks, there was some chat beforehand on trying to lock him up long-term, probably cheaper before he had those, those double digit sacks. And, uh, and I think that Matabike also knew what he was capable of and wasn't quite interested. And he bet on himself and he won. He won big time. And I don't hate that for any player. So, um, yeah, this is an opportunity that if you feel like Owe is um, maybe not exactly the Matabike story, but maybe something similar, then, yeah, you try to jump ahead before – I mean, who knows if, if he were to have like his best year, he could hit double digit sacks and then he's going to be way more than 17 million per year. So if that's the trajectory and that's what you believe he can do, I don't hate, I don't hate this, uh, this hypothetical proposal from Daniel Reese. And Sarah, think about how much already he's developed, like coming out of Penn state, 
as a, a late bloomer to the game of football to begin with, as was David Ajabo, given their their backgrounds. He came in and you're thinking, okay, like he's going to be a project. He's going to be a developmental project, and he, and he has been. But he came in really with one God-given move as a pass rusher coming out of college, and that was just his sheer speed and his explosiveness. What I think Chuck Smith has done particularly well with his development is adding to the technique side of what you can now see Adafi become hopefully in year four as somebody who's going to show you an arsenal of, of different moves to get to the quarterback. And uh, I think that that to me is what's exciting about it and what makes Daniel's proposal very intriguing. Before we continue with the off-season workouts, let's get to our brand sponsor, Mant to Sleep, uh, the Ellison and Trossett family. Man, I'm, I'm looking at Tilly right now. I wonder if she could use a, a sleep yeah. mask over here. <laughs> do they, have, do they <laughs> make make masks for dogs? We'll have to we'll have to touch we'll have to touch base with them on that for sure. But uh, of course, Mant to Sleep at mantasleep.com. You've got so many different options to enhance your sleep. Uh, these sleep masks gives you just a true 100% blackout, which adds to deeper sleep. You've got C-shaped eye cups, which gives you unbeatable side sleep comfort. Zero pressures applied on your eyelids or lashes. Advanced materials and ventilation for unmatched breathability are included. And I just wanted to go to the site so you guys have a good idea and understanding for what other options you have other than what Sarah and I rock, which are the pro masks in the upper right-hand corner there. But you've also got the sound mask. Sarah's son Aiden loves that one because it comes with a Bluetooth feature. You've got just the original sleep mask, the silk mask. These are oh, four London, of your... London likes that silk mask. Silk. There we go. Silky, yeah. like Rashad's route running. And Ella's got my pro mask. <laughs> See, the, the whole family's got it all. Like I said, I I just stick with the the super the simple bestseller yeah. the pro. It attaches in the back. Doesn't feel like there's any pressure whatsoever applied. And and I always say like, whether it's just your weekend cat naps midday or an actual deep sleep at night, uh, Manta has everything you possibly need for good, sound, solid sleep. So if you're interested, visit the show notes below, mantasleep.com. And once you get to the checkout, you can use our discount code VAULT10. That's V-A-U-L-T-1-0, VAULT10, for 10% off your next purchase. Who else showed up yesterday for the yeah, opening so, day of the offseason program? So sticking with the defense, pretty much the whole defensive line is there uh, from Michael Pierce. But talking about keeping on this theme of guys – that I love seeing there again, this is voluntary. Nobody has to be there, but you love to see some of these guys who are not established and you're counting on when we talk about Bobby, all the losses that the Ravens have had in free agency and them not feeling it through free agency. It's because of the pipeline the Ravens have from the draft. So the two guys in the middle, especially Travis Jones and then Tavius Robinson is right there. Tavius is obviously outside linebacker. Could have been pictured with Ojabo and, and Odafe that we just talked about. But good to see those two guys there. Again, guys with huge opportunities. Travis Jones, uh, is he heading, I think he's heading into his third year. Yep. Third round pick. Uh, Tavius Robinson, fourth or fifth round pick. And, you know, these are guys that's just like, this is why you let people walk in free agency. It's because you believe that these kind of guys are going to step up. So obviously the Ravens um, pretty much have their full defensive line, like their interior defensive line from last year, from Matt Abike to Michael Pierce, Travis Jones, Roger. He's not in here, not in this picture, but uh, Roger Washington. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, the only guy I didn't see was Brent Urban, maybe. Now, that's a guy that is established, but we do have a new defensive coordinator. I'm sure it's a very similar system, so mm -hmm. I'm sure uh, Urban will be in there at some point. But, yeah, big years ahead, especially Travis Jones. I would like to see him take another step forward because he's, he's going to be ready going into that third year. I was just going to say, you mentioned it, I think it was maybe last week when we were kind of forecasting who could be next year's Brandon Stevens, right? And and Travis's name came up and I, I think we're going to be singling him out a lot moving mm. forward these next few months, trying to project what year three could look like for him. You know, he, he's just somebody who clogs space 
Yeah. Right? A little space like, eater. Just a run stuffer specialist, as is the guy to his right, our left, Michael Pierce. And what a great mentor to have. Right? And while these guys are not on Matabike's level, they're both like Michael Pierce has pass rush ability and he's shown that and Travis Jones when he was drafted that was kind of some talk that he could do can, can do that too again not talking about Matt Abike double digit sacks but both mm -hmm. those guys have some pass rush savvy coming from the interior absolutely I, I can't think of a better mentor to have than Michael Pierce who I got to know a little bit during my time in radio he was always the, the media good guy too like willing to do whatever and I just think that not only does he have more left in the tank, but what he can provide Travis as he mm -hmm. moves along here and develops, I think um, that can't put a price tag on that. We'll continue. Look at this guy. Talk about being singled out. Dude, That's exactly ripped. what's going to be going on. Dude, dude, <laughs> look at how ripped he is. Like, yeah. And even like, uh, sorry, for audio listeners, we are talking about Trenton Simpson. <laughs> this is a guy that you want to see at the voluntary – Keep having to stress that so that nobody feels like they need to be there. The voluntary offseason program. But Trenton Simpson, man, he's the guy. He's the favorite. He's the one to step in for Patrick Queen right next yeah. to Roquan. It's a starting role right for his tech taking. And, I mean, dude, a lot of these guys, uh, these vests that they have on, I'm assuming, is um, kind of tracking. You think it's weight? I thought it was tracking speed and stuff. I don't know. Well, let's, let's see. Let's go. Big screen. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look weighted. You're right. Yeah. So, uh, but a lot of guys, they'll have that on, which will make it super tight. And then you'll kind of see, especially on the defensive lineman, right? Then their bellies kind of like, yeah. you can see the bellies even more pronounced. And even guys that are not defensive linemen, like um, some of the tight ends or whatever, like he is just like, he is just trim and yet, and yet bulky and muscular all at the same time. Like he, he, his, his body type looks like he's ready to take over a Patrick queen role, right? Where he's fast and move sideline to sideline, but, and then just like the look in his eyes like this, and it matches his personality and his energy. I mean, he wants it. He wants it. I'm so happy to see him here early kind of, and, and, you know, the second year is when a guy can really make a step, step forward, Bobby. I mean, he coming out of being drafted last year and, these rookies, man, they're dealing with so much. They've been going through their last year of college. They get ready for the combine. They get ready for their pro days. They go and get drafted, and they kind of want to celebrate. Oh, but wait a couple days later, it's rookie minicamp. You better get up to snuff. You better learn the playbook, all that kind of stuff. And so now, you know, he probably had a chance to breathe at the end of that season. He was able to kind of take it in as a rookie, kind of watch things, kind of decide, hey, what would I do if, if I were in there, when I'm in there? Um, so this is it. This is it. It's, this is a big opportunity for him. I always mention this when Trenton's name comes up, it was right after they drafted him. And I have a friend who works in the Clemson football department. So I was just trying to kind of get a good sense for, for what this guy's all about. And the way that he raved about him as just somebody who's going to make a seamless transition to the pros. Now we didn't, we weren't able to see that because of, where he was on the depth chart a year ago, but we saw how prepared he was for a quote unquote meaningless game in that regular season finale, mm. right against Pittsburgh. You saw the preparation, you saw the explosiveness, you saw the sideline to sideline speed, the instincts, the things that you, when you did start digging into him and his draft profile and me having these conversations with my buddy from, from the Clemson football department, this guy was is built to be, quite literally, physically, but even mentally, cognitively, is built to be an NFL linebacker. And so I, I don't think we should sit here and have rose-colored glasses and assume that there isn't going to be, and we're not. That's not like what we're drop, doing. Like there's no drop-off whatsoever, right? Right, right. Yeah. there will be, I'm sure, a, it's not his rookie year, but there will be a sophomore season learning curve, mm -hmm. drinking from the fire hose, assuming that he is the starter day one, you know, opposite Roquan. But I think that you could just bet on his development. You can bet on his love for the game. Um, and then clearly when you have those two things that are attached to his traits and the intangibles that you see just in this screenshot alone, that'll get you fired up.
Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it would be unfair. I think it'd be unfair of us to be, I mean, Patrick Queen just had a Pro Bowl year. So yeah. uh, it would be unfair of us to be like, oh, Trenton Simpson's going to be a Pro Bowl in his first year of starting. Right. So, so, so we should expect some sort of drop off. Okay. Continuing with the defense in the secondary. So the guys on the three guys on the left are, are the big ones. Glad to see them all. Okay. So that's our Darius Washington who just re-signed with the Ravens. Okay. Who can play uh, safety and um, inside uh, corner nickel spot. So nice signing there. Look at his quads too, man. These dudes who have like muscles that are like bigger than their kneeca kneecaps there and just, ugh, just unreal. He's got a nose for the ball. I really hope that he can stay healthy. He's just got a knack. There's, there's something about him. He's a playmaker at heart, you know, undrafted out of TCU. Always had a chip on his shoulder since the moment the Ravens called. Um, I, 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 I feel, I, I really look at our Darius as somebody who can be a game changer for this team. Not necessarily somebody who's going to get a bunch of rah rah and, and conversation around him, but if he can stay healthy, Sarah, he's a playmaker for them. And health is the is the kind of key word for all the three guys on the left because next <laughs> the to photo. him, <laughs> yeah. the next to him is Pepe Williams, and then Jalen Jalen Armour Davis, who were both um, fourth round picks together, I believe, and neither one of them has has been able to to, to stay healthy, and so. Um, I feel like this is a big, big, huge, at least with Washington, I feel like he's put enough on tape that like his NFL career is safe, right? Like him, him making the team is for sure safe. Whereas I would still lean towards Pepe and Jalen Armour Davis making the team just because you need that depth. But I, but their NFL careers, their projections aren't as safe as our Darius Washington's. And so, and we want that for, in fact, Pepe, I believe he was the first guest ever in the vault. Am I correct? It was either Pepe or Pat Ricard. Which one was it? I think it was Pepe. I don't All within like a month, we had Ricard, yeah. Pepe, and Evan Washburn. So it was one of those three guys. Yeah. And these are all good dudes, right? These are guys that you feel good rooting about or rooting for. But at some point, it's like, you, you got to stay on the field and, I remember last year when I went to uh, training camp, uh, Pepe still wasn't healthy enough. I remember seeing him yeah. running to the side, and then he got activated a few days later, but then got injured again. And so oh, it's going to be a big year for them. Now, offensive line. Glad to see some of these faces. And some, by the way, that aren't even pictured here. And by the way, just to say at the linebacker position, it's not just Trenton Simpson. I also saw pictures of um, uh, Ross. Josh Ross. Out Josh of Michigan. Ross. Yep. And um, – uh, forgetting his name, but other 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 line inside linebackers were there definitely yeah. for sure. Uh, it was well, I lost Delshawn really Phillips. So who 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 was the other one? Because because Phillips left and Malik Ham. Delshawn, okay, Malik Ham. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I saw Malik Ham. Um, okay, so here Leonard Baum obviously is nice and secure, but you like you like seeing Voorhees there, who's been a staple at strength and conditioning. I'm sure he's like, all right, I'm ready to get out of this because that's all he's been doing pretty much for a year. Ben Cleveland kind of there in the background. Look at big Ben in the back. There we go. <laughs> Look at that dude. He still looks like a monster back there. And then anyway, to the right, Daniel Falele. And uh, not pictured, but I also saw him there was um, uh, McCary. So McCary's there. I did not see Ronnie Stanley in any of the pitchers. It wouldn't surprise me if he was in this, maybe what I'm calling a rotation of, of established red veterans coming in yeah. and out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Daniel Flele, he, he's going to have to have draft. He's going to have drafted competition. So he's taken every look at, look at his thigh, Bobby. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not one of those that are muscular. Like I was just pointing out with our Darius Washington. That is just my waist. I mean, it's just, Look yep. at his calf. Oh his yeah. His calf might be my waist for heaven. I mean, that is that is a giant right there. These are these are abnormal human beings. Yeah, <laughs> You know? And there he is. Like you said, the the aforementioned Andrew Voorhees getting after it. Sleeve on that right leg, of course, just um little over a year removed from that torn ACL hours prior to his combine. He got that red shirt season. A year ago, uh, due to that recovery, and uh, hopefully making a, a full speed ahead here to try and be one of the Ravens' starting guards. It, it would not surprise me. I mean, we'll see. I, I imagine one of their earlier picks for the offensive line, the Ravens will take a tackle. 
But if they don't get a guard pick until like the fourth round, it would not shock me if these two right here, Voorhees is your starting left guard and Cleveland is your starting right guard. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that could be it, but we'll see. We'll see who they add to the draft. Those are the early favorites and we'll see how much that, we'll see if that knee can hold up throughout training camp for Voorhees, knock on wood for him. Look at this There's competition Thailand. right here. Thailand and guess who's right next to him? I got pictured. Oh yeah. Deontay, Deontay. Hardy. Here we go. Yeah, Here Deontay Hardy, the newest Ravens Wide signee slash course, returner. Spent, that's right. Spent last year in Buffalo, previous four seasons in New Orleans. He's a Baltimore native, started uh, Archbishop Curly High. So we all remember what what you shared. Uh, you grabbed that earlier. What was it last week when or maybe even when, when did you had in? It was Thailand? last week. It was when the, the it was reported that Hardy was signing and. Uh, <laughs> And Tylen Wallace retweeted the highlights of his uh, punt return against the Rams in overtime. Oh, baby. Love it. Good little competition. Let's do it. Let's see that play out this summer. And speaking of competition, not that there is one because you want them on, both on the field at all times together if you can. Isaiah Likely. Look at him. And it, it, it I almost thought that was Charlie Kohler behind him, but that's actually – um. Jordan Stout. Jordan Stout. But Look at Colart, him. He's huge. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's big. But Kolar is there. I, I didn't pull the yeah. picture, but he's there too. Look at Jordan. He's towering over Tylen and one of the strength <laughs> distance off to the right. Like he is a huge I, I saw him at Preakness last year in the in the middle of the field with his girlfriend. Yeah. He's the tallest dude by far. Yeah. Like he's Jordan Stout has got to be at least six four. He's a big dude. He's a big dude. But, but yeah, no, it's, it's like Isaiah likely is, is the guy. And again, he's somebody who, you know, could be more on the, more, more on the established side, but, uh, he's there. He's not quite established. He's not Mark Andrews, right? Mark Andrews, by the way, I mentioned this earlier, but I did not see him in the pictures. Um, but I, I assume he'll be in at some point, uh, along with this, this rotation of established veterans, but uh, but it's still a big year for Isaiah. I still we I think we all have the same dream that he and Mark come together throughout the season. Like they they both catch on. I want them both catching on, especially when it's just Zay who you feel like is really uh the guy you have full confidence in. You know, in in, in the wide receiver position, Bateman and other guys could still step up. Nelson Aguilar going down the line, but. Uh, big, big, big year for likely because of that, because we want to see him and Mark together. And by the way, Isaiah, I'm sure still feels like he's got a lot to prove. I mean, um, he wants to prove that he and Mark should be on the field at the same time, that even if Mark comes back, that it's like, Hey, let's get us go both going. And by the way, after that, cause this is his third year now, then in the fourth year, he'll be into a contract year and, and yeah. Mark will be coming at the end of his, his contract. So all these guys are always playing for their careers. Always. No doubt. And uh, love to see Isaiah and Kolar in there because this tight end, this tight end group is the strength of this offense. So what's Emmanuel Acho up, up to now? <laughs> so Emmanuel Acho, I think this is this was from last week. I we didn't have time to bring it in last week. So um Emmanuel Acho, who has not been everybody's favorite commentator as of late, I've disagreed with him a lot. Where I have respect for him is that he doesn't throw opinions out and then not interact. So Remember that day last year where he and I went back and forth almost the entire day <laughs> over um, over what was that about? It was the Miami game, and um, what was that about? It was about, and I should know because I went deep into the X's and O's. It was about whether or not something was done on purpose. Oh wait, was it the? Oh, what was that? It was with Lamar. Yeah. Did he look off some safety or something? Yes, it was Lamar looking off, and he's like, "No, no, no, he didn't." Yeah, Javon yeah, he Holland, he kind of like, "Oh no, he caught him." He like, oh, he 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 lined up as a lefty. Lamar lined up as a lefty. <laughs> yeah. My contention was is that it made the, the 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 Miami defense all play towards the left half of the field, and then last second he moved to the right, and then <laughs> and then got a big big play out of it so that's what it was but that's it. what i do at least appreciate about ocho is that while i disagree with him a in our back and forth it never got personal he never got like super defensive he stuck to like the argument at hand the topic 
And, and so I at least appreciated that, but boy, do we disagree a lot. And here we are disagreeing again. So he put out his top five, um, AFC teams. The order he had was five dolphins, four Ravens, three Bengals, two Texans. And then of course, everybody has to agree with number one on the chiefs. And so, um, when they do these lists, they always like take it to their panel, right. And say, Hey, what do you think? How did I do? And so the topic that the panel was to discuss was did Ocho crown CJ Stroud and the Texans too soon as basically the number one threat to the chiefs. Okay. okay. And so his basic argument, cause I didn't pull out his full argument, but basically he felt like with the additions that the Texans have made leading with Stefan Diggs on top of the continuity that they'll have off of last year, where it was like, Rookie year for CJ Stroud, rookie year for head coaching. You got the offensive coordinator coming back, yada, yada, yada. They didn't lose too much. And then, whereas with the Ravens, they lost a lot, especially on defense. And then his argument was like, and their division isn't tough. So for all of those reasons, he put them at number two. Now, listen, I don't think it's crazy. I'll be honest with you. I don't think it's crazy if you mix and match Ravens, Bengals, and Texans within that two through four range, personally. Now, as as a Ravens content creator and my love for Lamar and my belief in him, I feel like Ravens easily could be number two. And that's if I did an official list, I'd probably put it there. But I don't think it's crazy for anybody to kind of play with those three. Okay. So anyway, they take this this to the to the panelists. Did Acho crown the Texans too soon? And so James Jones was the first to kind of push back. And he mostly argued from a Lamar Jackson point of view. Although, did the video not get up, up uploaded when I was having those? Uh, I'm pulling it in right now. Remember, I was having those technical difficulties. Well, there's one that says under breath here. Is that the one? No, that one I'm going to play second. So they let, they let uh, James Jones talk, and then they go back through the panel. And then James Jones came back a second time. And then Acho, I was with Acho at least with his arguments up until the end. And I thought he did get a little disrespectful. So uh, we're like 75% uploaded here. Well, while you do that, I I really think that by him crowning Houston in a sense here on this list, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We're going to hear and see this all off season long in the next year. Yeah. And that's just the reality of what they've done. It's what they it's what they over it's it's because they overachieved in year one with CJ. Yeah. And it's because of the digs move, along with many other aspects of what makes them really good. But I, I think, you know, between Kansas City, Joe Burrow and company coming back, guns blazing and healthy, and what the Ravens are and the additions that they've made, to me, there is a very, very small very small finite differences between the three of those teams and you could honestly coin flip yeah in terms of which which those three that's not to say i I just think houston peaked a little bit too early and a lot has to go right for them this upcoming season especially with the new pieces brought in and we know Diggs is really hard to please Mm. so i'm not going to sit here and bank on them being there immediately overnight i think there's a lot of cohesion that needs to take place and gelling uh but but Kansas City and Cincinnati and, and Baltimore, they've proven who they are. Kansas they've City has obviously proven that yeah, they are the team to beat, right? Yeah. But Cincinnati and Baltimore are absolutely right there. And, and I just think there's a very, very small difference. So I think those top four, I think those, yeah, Chiefs, Bengals, Ravens, to your point, have all been consistent, but Ravens and Bengals have consistently lost the Chiefs. Yes, but they they're getting there every year. So anyway, here is James Jones. I just think it's I just think it's a little bit disrespectful to uh, Lamar Jackson. Main reason is Lamar wins every year in the regular season. season. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, do. so it ain't like this was like a one year wonder. We don't know what CJ Stroud going to do next year. Do I think he's a phenom? Do I think he's an excellent quarter? Absolutely. But Lamar has shown it year after year after year. This is a two time MVP and he slapped y'all in the playoffs. He did. And so for me, slapped. all that on paper could be true, but maybe the type of dude I am out of respect. Mm. Lamar Jackson would have been at two. You were the second best team in the AFC last year, would have been at two. I don't know what the Bengals are going to be. Lost some key defensive players, 
receiver ain't happy, lost a really good running back in Joe Mixon. My dog Shady always say, I ain't seen Joe Burrow with not a lot of talent around him. Who knows how the Cincinnati Bengals are going to look? So I think they are up there too high as well. The Ravens at four, that's the one that really stands out. I think you're tripping. <laughs> Texas is definitely not number two. I think you're tripping. I like that. So anyway, then they went around the, the table. Uh, LaShawn McCoy actually agreed. He he liked the Texans at two. Um, and then uh, James Jones comes back at the end. And this is where, like, it was the under-the-breath comment that kind of got me from Acho at the end. Awesome. It's going to be, it's going to be bad. Either way, the Texans are going to be the and team they coach to well. And they coach well. Incredibly. Respect on Lamar, man. Incredibly. Love right. Lamar, man. He does. I mean, he does. Lamar. Real good player. Lamar. One more win than playoffs from CJ Stroud. When we read. He does. He oh, I, I know that. That's, 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 you see, McCoy's like, okay, now I'm not with you. I was with you before until you said, okay, oh, yeah, he's a good player. One one more playoff win than, than C.J. Stroud. And so it's like, all right, true. But Lamar's, you know, had, you know, plenty of playoff berths. And uh, nobody's gotten past Mahomes quite so. So we can play this. We can talk this playoff game the whole time. But nobody's getting – nobody's gotten past the Chiefs. And that is kind of the point there. So – yeah, I didn't like the, the last comment. And the other thing, here, here's what I'll just say. I do think the Texans are going to be good. I think that they're going to be very good. One thing they're going to have to contend with is they're not, sneak, they're not sneaking up on anybody anymore. And so last year, you make predictions around this time, maybe even after the draft when they got C.J. Stroud, it's still going to be like, ah, oh, they'll probably be like, what, a five-win team? Yeah. And now they put it on tape. And, and, you know, same thing that people said about the Ravens after Lamar kind of broke out in 2019. Well, now it's on tape and it did get harder. And we saw that Greg Roman and and everybody didn't evolve enough, right? Now that doesn't mean that Lamar got figured out because he can do lots of things, but they just didn't evolve enough. And so it is going to be on the Texans where, you know, people are now going to be giving you their best shot and your stuff is on tape. Now they do got digs, so that'll be new. But, uh, but I well, so I think they're going to be good, but I also think it's too early to crown them, which is what Acho's doing. Remember, too, Houston's going to be looking at that first place schedule, being that they won the division a year ago as well. So it does not get any easier whatsoever moving forward, but they're going to be in the conversation, no doubt, barring something unforeseen. Well, who's in the conversation in Baltimore is the king, Derrick Henry, of course reported for the first day of voluntary off-season training regiments at one winning drive. And, of course, he had to stop by the Baltimore staple, Jimmy's Famous Seafood in Dundalk. And Jimmy's was kind enough to welcome him in, as they do with a lot of Baltimore athletes. He's going to enjoy free crab cakes for life. That was part of their recruiting pitch during the free agency process. And they even went ahead and added a sushi roll. It's King Hen Roll. For 21 bucks, and Derek likes what he saw. Doesn't he? I just need to know. I got to eat when I come in town for the draft. I get there around noon, right? My flight gets in. I got to go eat somewhere good. I feel like I need, I feel like I need some crab cakes while I'm in Baltimore again. Yeah. So, and then I can add a King Henry in there if I can make it over to, to Jimmy's. So, <laughs> the fact that you think there's going to be any time for Anything related to <laughs> non-draft stuff that day is is we can't quite go get lunch. Lofty, I can't go get lunch. Quite a lofty thought. What am I gonna eat? The draft doesn't start until <laughs> eight. We uh, we can set up before at like what four? I can't eat between twelve and four. I'm gonna go I'll get make lunch, sure Bobby. clean cuisine takes care of you. Oh, How about okay. that. All right. They make a mean crab cake. Okay, I would like that, please. Please there we go. Please, please. Yes. Jerry and Aaron, if you're listening. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, so Patrick Mahomes was named by Time Magazine as one of the world's most influential people this year. Okay, so Time 100. <laughs> Samuel, I hopefully I'm saying this right. Yeah, thank you, Tanya. Sarah can eat Bobby, LOL. <laughs> uh, if we want like a good version of me during the draft, I'm going to need to eat. <laughs> For sure. So anyway, angry. you're not you when you're angry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My kids know if I'm tired and, and hungry, which usually at eight o'clock, I'm usually done. 
But uh, anyway, Samuel Njoku, am I saying the name right? At Ravens Talk Pod. Yeah, he hosts the show. Yep. Yeah, he's he's fun. He's a fun follow. He's um he's sarcastic and pretty dry. I always enjoy his humor. Anyway, he quote retweeted this that you know Patrick Mahomes was named one of the world's most influential, which he probably would not have happened if they didn't win the Super Bowl again. So Samuel's <laughs> like quote retweets and says, "All because Baltimore forgot to run the ball." <laughs> Too funny. Too I, funny. I agree. This is not funny. But, uh, well, could it be? I don't know. Cortland Sutton did not report, maybe from a Denver perspective, because there's been a lot of humor out there, not in the right ways. It's been a humorous couple years for the Broncos. But um, Cortland Sutton did not report on Monday for the voluntary workouts as he seeks a new contract, according to Tom Pelissero's source of NFL Network. Sutton's going on his 10th starting QB. That This is what's humorous. Are you kidding me? He's going on his 10th starting QB in seven seasons and only has 2 million guaranteed left on his deal. He has 10 touchdowns, had 10 touchdowns in 2023 while ranking 56th in total targets. And I want to make sure we just shout out the guy who tweeted at us prior to this um, at Mr. Stark himself on X mentioned you and I in Tom's tweet and said, you know, is this worth monitoring? According to Jeff Zrebeck, we almost got him last year. I've been wanting him for the longest time. Big X wide receiver, good deep threat. So anyway, just something to monitor there. And and, and if he hadn't have reminded, I, I had forgotten that there were there were some a little bit of chatter about the Ravens and Cortland. I had last yeah, year. It was a good reminder there. So. And by the way, this this one where it's like per source, this for sure feels like an agent source because as we just named, like I named all the established veterans that you know, did not come to the, or appear, uh, seemingly did not come based off the pictures they, they put out seemingly did not attend. And so like if Cortland Sut Sutton didn't attend, like th nobody would be making a big deal about it, but it's, it's purposely as he's seeking out a new contract, which you would think that that is an agent source right there sending a message. Cause there's plenty of people that don't show up at voluntary workouts. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So something to just look out for and look out for this guy. In year three, Kyle Hamilton's 90.7 career PFF grade is the second among all players in the 2022 draft class. One of the game's top safeties already through two seasons. He can do it all, every level. Almost. It feels like he's a factor on every level of Baltimore's defense. So can't wait to see what, what he looks like in that year, th year three step. of development. Yep. Take another and, and, step. You wouldn't expect anything less, right? No, no. He's 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 on a trajectory. He's on an all pro trajectory. Uh he's on his way. That's that's gonna be a staple in Baltimore for years to come. Yeah, and we'll be talking about that 14th overall selection for years to come as well. That's right. For sure. That was bold. That was bold. Shout out to a couple of our newest patrons who are supporting the channel and everything we're building here in Baltimore on the back end through Patreon. And we really appreciate you guys. 100 crystal clear and scott cochran thank you both if you guys are interested in doing the same out there visit patreon.com forward slash ravens vault podcast to learn more about what we're offering here this month so with that we've got over 4600 people concurrently watching this right now majority of whom are on x didn't realize x would be such a a big component for the live stuff that we're doing the live stuff it blows up on x my goodness look at that yeah, at S.G. Ellison's leading the way. <laughs> um, and so just one reminder, we're nine days out. One more reminder here, nine days out from the NFL draft, which means we're going to be celebrating opening night nine days from tonight at Soundstage in downtown Baltimore. We're putting on our first ever legitimate inaugural in-person marathon draft party coverage in the, in the years past. You know, previously we've done – virtual stuff, which will still be an option on YouTube and X and, and across all platforms that night. But we also wanted to give you guys an opportunity to come out and hang with us in person. So 40 bucks, Thursday, April 25th. Tickets are available right now in our show notes. There's a link to Ticketmaster where you can secure yours. That does include dinner. There'll be a cash bar. I just actually found out last night 
that we're going to have some memorabilia, some Kyle Hamilton's mm. memorabilia to give away. Nice. Thanks to Preston Automotive Group, my my car dealership sponsor. And so a uh, lot of lot of different reasons to come out here. I also hear there's going to be a couple former Super Bowl champions who are coming out to join us in person as well. And uh, we got a lot more to finalize here and announce over the next nine days. But Sarah's flying in from Columbus for this. And we really, really hope you'll consider coming out because uh, not only is it a great, great opportunity to interact with us in person, but you can meet some other Ravens fans. Uh, we'll take you right up until the 30th overall pick. There will be video boards in there. So you can actually watch the, the, the you know, ESPN coverage leading up. And of course, we'll have our sound piped through the stereo. So it should mm -hmm. be a really cool environment. And I uh, can't wait to get back together with you in person. Am I going to have your permission to eat during this? <laughs> Listen, the clean cuisine catering here. Do I get to eat there? Because I got to eat sometime, Bobby. You let me know when I'm allowed to eat. Clean, clean <laughs> cuisine is coming in hot. You can have a plate in front of your friggin' computer all, all, night, all night, all night for all I care. Keep it coming. Keep it coming all night long. Remember, clean, clean cuisine fed me all football season, as you know. Yes, I do know. And so I, I ate really well this fall and uh, just just hope that everybody will come out and give them a give them a shot. Uh, it'll allow us to kind of make a really good first impression with, uh, you know, with soundstage. And, you know, the, the biggest important part of that is like, it's going to allow us to just do more things like that moving forward. So if you guys could help us out, we would love for you to join us. Ticketmaster is where you can get your tickets right now. There's a link in the, in the video description below for the audio only audience. It'll also be in yours as well. So with that, if you guys haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to The Vault on YouTube, checking us out in audio-only fashion wherever you get your podcasts, liking this video on YouTube if you enjoyed it, and leaving us a rating and review in the audio-only side if you haven't already done so as well. It only takes about 30 seconds and goes a long way in the audio format. So with that, partner, appreciate you. Tuesday Ravens Lunch Hour live stream has now come to a complete. We will be back in 23 hours from now for a Wednesday lunch hour. I appreciate you guys. Hope you're enjoying the new format. And for Sarah Ellison, I'm Bobby Trossett signing off. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.